The movie that answers the question nobody ever asked, what if all those raw eggs that Rocky drank were actually radioactive? Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about the 2022 superhero action movie, Samaritan. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all that extra content. Samaritan stars Sylvester Stallone, Javon Walton, and Pilu Asbeck, and was directed by Julius Avery. 25 years after the death of superhero Samaritan, a troubled 13-year-old is convinced that the vigilante's still alive and is actually his neighbor. Samaritan has been a long time coming. It was written as a spec script more than a decade ago, and it was originally supposed to be theatrically released in 2020, but became one of the many seemingly perpetually postponed films. For some reason, this one took longer than most to finally come out, and was relegated to a Prime Video streaming release, which was probably a good choice. I'll admit that I've been low-key looking forward to this one since late 2019. It always just missed the cut from my annual Most Anticipated Movies lists, but the prospect of a proper Sylvester Stallone superhero movie was a very intriguing one. Over the last 20 years or so, but especially in the last decade, we've been inundated by superhero and comic book movies. The vast majority of these films have come from the big two, DC or Marvel. But there have been a handful of movies based on comics by smaller, independent companies as well. What's been even more rare, though, especially lately, are the superhero movies not actually based on a comic book at all, but rather just written as their own movie. Samaritan is one of those movies, and unfortunately, it's abundantly obvious in the worst ways. There's nothing here that you haven't seen before. That in itself doesn't make for a bad movie, as long as there's something beyond the expected tropes and predictable story beats. But there really isn't here. It had potential, it's just that the script is very average, so we end up with some subpar dialogue and an uninspired story. Samaritan is definitely a B movie. I don't think that was the original intention, but it ended up being one. So, like I said before, having a very familiar, predictable story doesn't always equate to being a bad movie. Sometimes that predictability can lead to satisfaction, especially for a B-action movie where you go in with certain expectations, Oscar-worthiness not being one of them. Despite being exceptionally familiar, this one doesn't really deliver what you'd probably expect it to, because it's torn between being two different types of movies. On one hand, it's sort of this family-oriented superhero movie that focuses on a 13-year-old kid meeting his idol and having sort of a mentor relationship. But on the other hand, we've got Stallone playing this grizzled ex-superhero in a gritty city full of gangs and attempts at social commentary. These two very different things never quite mesh together very well, so it ends up feeling like an underwhelming story. As with most superhero movies, you expect some action, and this movie does deliver a good deal of it. None of it's great, but it's okay. With the exception of one simulated long take, the editing of the fight sequences is very quick cut, which doesn't do the movie any favors, but is understandable considering Stallone is 76 years old. There's a lot of over-the-top flinging of people, so it does get a bit repetitive, but it has its fun moments. It's clear, though, that this was probably originally meant to be a bit more bloody and brutal, but was cut down to PG-13, which, again, is understandable, but I think ties into that competing stories issue I mentioned before. Part of this also could have been budgetary, because this very much looks like a made-for-TV type of movie. They try with the visual effects, but they're pretty bad and also incredibly distracting. There's one moment of CGI de-aging that falls into that creepy, video game-ish uncanny valley, but luckily that's only for one shot. The fake fires, on the other hand, are pretty much constant throughout this movie. It's no secret that star power can make or break movies. Not every film needs to have, or even should have, big name actors, but having one is often a draw. Now, I wouldn't go as far as to say that Stallone makes this movie, but there wouldn't be much here without him and his star power. It's Stallone, so you know what you're gonna get here acting-wise. 
semi-unintelligible line delivery, cheesy, over-sentimental dialogue, a lumbering character with very simple motivations. It's not really a good performance, but it's a Stallone performance. It's definitely his type of character and his type of underdog story, so he just fits here. Like I said, I don't think he makes this movie, because I don't think it's a movie that even qualifies as made, but he does manage to elevate an otherwise lackluster film to okay. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. Really, the only pro here is Sylvester Stallone. It's not one of his better performances, but it's also not a bad one either. It's reminiscent of many of his past characters, and it's certainly becoming a very familiar type of role for him in the last few decades, but this is really his type of role, so it works. He brings that Stalloniness to this movie, which provides a bit of balance between the action, cheesiness, and heart, which helps to elevate the movie. On the con side, the biggest issue was the script. It had a decent bit of potential, so I can understand why a spec script like this would get greenlit. It just needed a little bit more work. The story's excessively familiar, but also feels weirdly incomplete. The villains have minimal motivation, or plans. The plot itself feels disjointed and torn between being two different types of movies, and the opening exposition gives away way too much of the story. Some of the dialogue is really bad, but that's the kind of thing that could be overlooked if there was something else to latch onto, but this is one of those unremarkable throwaway movies. The second con is the visual effects. I don't know what the budget of this movie ended up being, I suspect not very high, but even so, whew, some of the effects are okay. The fight sequences have a lot of throwing or flinging of people and things. It looks very over the top and comic booky, but I have to imagine that was kind of what they were going for. So even though it occasionally looks a little cheap, it works within the context of the movie. What doesn't work though is pretty much all of the other visual effects. They're just weirdly distracting. There's de-aging, goofy glowing stuff, and so much very unconvincing CG fire. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying any of the films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you use them, if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm gonna give Samaritan two and a half out of five paws, and that's probably a little generous. It's got a low-budget, made-for-TV feel, and a vigilante superhero story you've seen time and time again, but Stallone imbues at least a little bit of fun and heart to this otherwise extremely familiar revenge tale. I would recommend Samaritan to people who like Sylvester Stallone movies, especially Stallone movies from the last decade or so. Samaritan is very much a dad movie. It's got some fantastical superhero stuff thrown in for good measure, but this is a fairly generic revenge story with a pseudo-father-son relationship at its core. If you liked Samaritan, I would recommend Peppermint. Although there's no superhero component, it's another somewhat recent vigilante-type story, this one starring Jennifer Gardner. If you prefer having that superhero component, you might want to check out Kick-Ass. It's a fairly violent action comedy, but like Samaritan, grounds itself in a somewhat believable real world. And if you just want to see Stallone star in another superhero movie, this time based on a comic book, you should watch Judge Dredd. It's not exactly a good movie, but it might satisfy you if you're looking for some comic booky B-movie sci-fi action. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Samaritan? If so, what you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite superhero movie not based on a comic book or graphic novel? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. Alright, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe to your at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.